So we have to talk about the Starbucks workers and what they're doing across the country. Uh, I don't even know how to describe what they're doing, but I do know for sure that all of their activity demonstrates beyond a shadow of a doubt that labor is back. And at this point, I feel as if we're on a trajectory to make labor and the labor movement, more broadly speaking, in this country stronger than ever. So it wasn't long ago when Chris Smalls led the first Amazon warehouse to a union. Uh, but Starbucks workers back in November in Buffalo, New York, at a store, they voted to form the very first union in the company's history. And that was only the beginning because now there is a company-wide effort to unionize. Now, earlier this month, the flagship Starbucks location in New York voted to unionize. Just this week, two stores in the Boston area voted unanimously to form unions. And we're to the point where 18 stores have voted to unionize since that first store unionized in Buffalo, New York in late 2021. And um, more than 200 plus stores are now fighting to unionize in uh, uh, 30 different states. 200 plus Starbucks locations are fighting to unionize. Now, all of this is happening despite one of the most intense union busting campaigns in decades. This is according to In These Times. But since that article was published back in late March, the number of stores trying to unionize doubled. So just stop for a moment and appreciate that. Starbucks is doing everything in their power, even firing union organizers at particular locations, closing down stores, and the union effort is, is growing. It literally doubled in the span of uh, a couple of weeks. It's absolutely insane. And the company at this point is so desperate that they're trying everything, including increasing benefits specifically for non-union workers. So as CNBC explains, Starbucks' campaign to dissuade baristas from unionizing could include extending new benefits exclusively to non-union workers. The company's CEO, Howard Schultz, told U.S. store leaders this week that he is reviewing the coffee chain's benefit program for its workers. However, employees who work at company-owned stores that vote to unionize would be ineligible for those improved benefits, Schultz said. Schultz cited federal labor law and advice from the company's legal counsel in saying it would be illegal to extend benefits unilaterally with unionized locations in the equation. Under federal labor law, employers have to bargain with the union that represents their workers when it comes to changes in compensation, benefits, or other terms of their employment. But companies can still ask unionized employees if they want additional benefits. So, I mean, this is obviously a deliberate and cynical ploy to get uh, any employee that was considering a union to not opt for a union. Because if the goal of the union is to get better pay and better benefits, well, then if the company's offering you this anyway, then what's the point of the union? Kind of makes the union unnecessary, right? Except, no. This is a union busting ploy. See, the reason why a union would still be necessary, even if Starbucks did offer better benefits, is because what these companies do is they'll say, okay, we're going to offer you health care, but this is only for full time employees. So you've got to work at least 35 hours a week or 37 hours a week. And if you uh, work that much, then we will uh, make sure you have health care. The problem is that then they'll deliberately schedule employees for like 34 point five hours. Uh, and this is what they all do. So when I worked at Walmart, uh, they would actually write you up if you went over your scheduled time, because then, oh, under law, you have to be offered benefits if you cross into a certain hourly um, threshold per week. So this is this is obviously what they're going to do. They're going to say, hey, here's some new benefits that we're going to dangle in front of you, but we won't actually give them to you because you won't be employed full time. We won't schedule you enough to qualify for these benefits. I mean, they're full of shit. And this is why the employees are unionizing because they see right through it. It's an embarrassing attempt to placate workers that I don't think is going to work. But Howard Schultz is trying to do anything because He's desperate. So more from CNBC on this. As the union push gains momentum, Workers United has alleged that the company has engaged in union busting activity, including firing organizers, cutting barista hours at unionizing locations and other forms of retaliation. In March, the National Labor Relations Board filed a complaint against Starbucks, alleging that it violated federal labor law by firing organizers at a Phoenix location. In his week and a half back at the helm of the company, Schultz has already been waging a more aggressive campaign against the union than previous CEO Kevin Johnson. Schultz has mentioned the union in public letters and speeches with workers, painting the push to 
organized as divisive and unnecessary. Quote, and while not all the partners supporting unionization are colluding with outside union forces, the critical point is that I do not believe conflict, division, and dissension, which which has been a focus of union organizing, benefits Starbucks or our partners. He wrote in the letter to employees Sunday. I'm sorry, but he is so full of shit. Uh, now, I want to play a video. Uh, this is an interview from uh, Democracy Now! with one of the first organizers of the uh, very first store that unionized in Buffalo. Uh, their name is Jazz Brzezek, and they basically call Howard Schultz's bluff here, call out his hypocrisy and his hyperbole also, which uh, I won't spoil that for you. But um, they say, you know, Starbucks has this reputation of being this really progressive company. They're in favor of, uh, you know, LGBTQ plus rights, Black Lives Matter. But yet when it comes to labor rights, the company literally views labor as an assault. They view unionization as an assault. It's preposterous. So take a look at what this worker says about Howard Schultz. And then when we come back, I'll give you the additional context because it truly is just absurd. And Howard Schultz is making a fool of himself. But let's listen. It's been incredible to see this turn into this kind of national movement. Um, I mean, we've had support from the beginning from partners across the country. And the first door to file after Buffalo was actually a Mesa uh, Arizona store whose manager was retaliated against for telling us exactly what all of these people coming into Buffalo um, were actually up to. And when Starbucks retaliated against her and fired her um, before she had the chance to um, finish her time at Starbucks after resigning, um, they were the first store to um, petition outside of Buffalo. But from there, it's been incredible. I feel like it's almost I'm not even able to keep up with how many more stores <laughs> have been um, launching. So it's incredible to see so many um, folks. And the first store in the South won a few weeks ago in Knoxville, which was really incredible. The Memphis folks are still, not only did Starbucks fire um, six out of the seven person organizing committee, um, but they also um, have still delayed that vote from actually being scheduled um, with the labor board. but. It's incredible to see more people um, joining and this movement growing. And I think we all know that that's how we're actually going to get the kind of contract that we can sign and that partners deserve is by continuing to get stronger and show that despite everything, we keep overcoming that union busting and um, standing together in solidarity. And I mean, I think it's ridiculous <laughs> that Howard Schultz is first this threatened by unions because we've said from day one you know, we're not doing this because we're opposed to Starbucks. We're doing this because we want to make Starbucks the best that it can be and the most sustainable that it can be. It says it's a progressive company that celebrates, you know, all of these other forms of activism, LGBT rights, environmental justice, um, Black Lives Matter. Um, and then suddenly it's being assaulted by labor rights. So that doesn't make sense. That's not consistent with what the Starbucks says it is. Um, but I think you know, we've seen Howard come to Buffalo and make really inappropriate comparisons to um, the Holocaust. And now we're seeing him say that he's being assaulted. So I think, you know, he tries to acknowledge that it's a sensitive subject, but he's still really missing the mark on how to talk about it. Yeah. So uh, I love the enthusiasm there. Uh, I love how optimistic Starbucks workers are because what they're doing is paying off. Right. They're making their voices heard. They're staking their claim. And it's working. It's working. You have two stores just this week vote unanimously to unionize. You know Howard Schultz is shitting bricks. But uh, they were correct. So when uh, they said that he used a Holocaust analogy, he actually did this. I looked it up. So I'm paraphrasing here, but he was talking about why unions are bad. And he said, you know, in Germany, in concentration camps, not all of the prisoners would get blankets. And so some of the prisoners would share blankets. So uh, Starbucks wants to be the type of company that shares blankets. OK, so what are you trying to say? Are you trying to say that the union organizers, Howard, are like the Nazis? Or are you saying that Starbucks and the working conditions are comparable to concentration camps? Because you can interpret that in a multitude of ways. And uh Either way, it doesn't look good for you. And he also called it an assault. We talked about this last week. I can't get over that. He actually said this is like an assault on corporations. Absurd. So one thing that I love about this isn't just how successful these unionized efforts are, but it's to see how these CEOs lose their fucking minds 
as the unionization effort spreads across the company and is successful. And if these Starbucks workers have taught us anything, it's that when one domino falls, the rest will follow. And I hope that that's true with the Amazon union. All it took was one Starbucks store to unionize. And now just a couple of months later, more than 200 stores across the country are fighting to unionize. Now we had one Amazon store unionize. Will others follow? I'm not sure. But what I do know is that this labor movement is really, really encouraging to see. And uh, anytime uh, you see a company lose their shit and fight this hard, use all of these tactics and be that hyperbolic to fight unions, that goes to show you unions are very powerful. And there's a reason why these companies don't want their workers to form unions.